Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernal from the BTN HD, and today is all about capturing the old computer name within MDT. Uh, so what does this title mean? I've seen this question a lot throughout my MDT videos. Basically, when you want to re-image a machine that already has a computer name that's already part of Active Directory, you don't want to rename it again. You want to capture that name that it already has, right? Uh, as you know, MDT kind of regenerates a computer name for you during the deployment time and you have to erase it and name it the way that you want it. But what if you just want to keep the computer that you're re-imaging with the same name? You want to keep it with the same name, right? So this is how you do it. So first things first, I have a VBS script on my desktop. I will share this out to you guys within my GitHub. Um, I'm going to double click on it and this is what it has. It has two functions. Uh, it has a function user exit and function get offline computer name. Now this VB script, I got it from online. Uh, it's well known throughout the TechNet forum uh, within the Microsoft site. So it's nothing new, nothing special. Uh, but again, I will provide it uh, within my GitHub. I will place the link at the bottom at the comment section so you guys could go grab it. Once you have this script, we need to actually copy and paste it into your deployment share script folder as I did. One step done. Now for me, within my deployment, I have a task sequence, a Windows 10 task sequence. Super simple, nothing special. You don't really need to do anything within your task sequence. The secret sauce is actually within your custom settings.ini. Within my environment, within my Azure environment, I'm not doing any pixie booting, so I'm using my media. So the media that I am burning into an ISO and then mounting my ISO into my Hyper-V virtual machines to boot into, uh, I'm actually gonna right click on it and go to properties. And within properties, you're going to go to rules. Now, if you're doing it without using a media, what you're going to do is up here, this guy right here, you're going to right click on that, right? Go to properties and then go to rules. And within rules, um, this is up to you, but I'm doing it within the video. Now, I had skip computer name to yes because I wanted to skip it. So I changed it to no. And the reason why I changed it to no is because I want to show you guys when I pick my task sequence, I wanted to stop at the computer details, which is the computer name. And you're going to see that I actually grab the computer name that we are re-imaging. It didn't give me a, a crazy like win int blah 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 right for the computer name. Now next thing that we need to do is within here, within the default, we're going to add the two following. User exit equals to user exit dot vbs. And then we're going to call out OSD computer name, which is equal to hash computer offline computer name, uh, open and close parentheses, which is the function that we're going to use within user exit dot VBS, and then close it with a hashtag. Okay. Once you do that, you apply it, you okay it. And because I'm using a ISO and media, I am going to right click on my media. And I'm going to update the media content and it's going to start updating. And once it's done, you're going to get this. Now, if you're doing it within the deployment share, most likely you're going to update your deployment share and then just continue doing it that way. Once the process of updating my media uh, was completed, I just clicked on finish. And my ISO is actually located right here in my C drive. And this is where I'm going to use to boot into my virtual machine. Now, I have a virtual machine called btnhd v Windows 10. It's part of my active directory on my domain controller. If I uh, get inside systems and you can see that this is a computer name right here and this is a full qualified uh, domain name and it's part of my domain. All right. So the way it's supposed to work is if I boot this machine using the ISO and I pick that task sequence, right? and it gets to the part of the computer details, it should give me this computer name right here. This is what I want. I don't want to type that in, right? I want MDT to automatically do it for me. So I'm going to click on action, and within action, I'm going to shut down the machine, and I'm going to do shut down. It's going to start shutting down the machine, and once it's shut down, I'm going to go to file, I'm going to click on settings, and within settings, I'm going to go to the DVD drive, and I'm going to pick 
image file, click on browse, and I'm gonna browse where that ISO is at, all right? Once I pick my ISO, I'm gonna click on open, and there you go. Now, because I'm using a Hyper-V, I'm going to make sure that my boot order is set correctly. So I'm going to go inside BIOS and just make sure CD is first, okay? I'm gonna click on start. It's gonna say press any key to boot inside the CD or DVD. That's a good thing. It starts loading up the files and then it gets to here. This is the task sequence that I created. It's a plain client installation. The only difference is within my custom settings .ini file, I just enabled not to skip the computer name. So when I pick it and I click on next, my computer name, boom, look at that. How awesome is that? Cool, that's one less thing that I have to deal with. Uh, again, you don't need to do skip the computer name to equal to no, you could probably do yes and it will automate everything for you in one shot. So again, I will provide the VB script for you. I'll place the link at the bottom at the comment section. I might drop it inside my GitHub. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Leave comments right below. Don't forget about hitting that like button. And make sure to subscribe and share out the video. And I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.